Okay, today we're going to talk about complex forms of inheritance. And we've been talking about Mendelian genetics and Mendelian inheritance, where we have dominant and recessive uh, traits and genes. And so in dominant, remember that one allele hides or, or covers the other, and recessive is that allele that is hidden or covered uh, if there's a dominant pres present. And so that's Mendelian genetics or Mendelian inheritance. Today we're going to look at a couple of different types of forms of inheritance that are a little bit more complex and don't follow the rules or the guidelines of Mendelian genetics. And so these um, follow different patterns of inheritance. They can involve multiple genes and other factors. And there's a lot of different types of forms of inheritance. We're going to look at five here, incomplete or blended dominance, codominance, multiple alleles, sex-linked, and polygenic. The first one that we're going to look at is called incomplete dominance. And I'm sure you've seen this one in nature. This one's very common. Incomplete dominance results in a phenotype that is a blend of a heterozygous allele pair. And so normally we've been talking about if we have a black and white mouse and under Mendelian genetics if they're crossed we get black or white. Well in incomplete dominance our example, a good example is flower color. And so let's say here we have a red flower and we have a white flower and those two produce offspring and their flowers can be pink. The heterozygous form produces a different phenotype. So the phenotype of the heterozygous here, mixed between the two parents, produces a different phenotype. And so we get a pink flower in this case. If we were to cross two heterozygotes here, that's what we're doing here, we end up with one flower that's red, two flowers that are pink, and one flower that's white. The two pink flowers are heterozygous, and so they have a different phenotype than the homozygous dominant or the homozygous recessive. That's incomplete dominance. We get a blend or a mix of the two. The next one we're looking at is called incomplete dominance. And so in, uh, in Harry Potter, uh, this is another good example, if uh, dragons have firepower alleles, F with strong fire, and F prime with no fire, what would be the um, phenotypes for these different genotypes if this trait in dragons follows um, incomplete dominance? Take a minute and go ahead and fill out this chart. So our two F um, alleles are going to be strong fire, uh, a normal F and an F prime are going to be medium fire, and then two F primes are going to be no fire. So again, our heterozygous form has a, a blend or a midpoint um, in between these two different um, genotypes. The next one that we're going to look at is called codominance. And in codominance, rather than getting a blend, we get the presence of both traits. Um, both of the alleles are present. So our good example here is if we have a red and a white horse, we can get something called a roan horse, which is red and white spotted. And so in this horse, we have both red and white spots. Uh, cows can also be, um, uh, can be roan. And so in codominance, we get both traits present. We don't get a mix, um, but they're both present. So here's an example for codominance uh, using Harry Potter again. If people have tail color alleles B for blue and G for green, that follow codominance, uh, inheritance, what are the possible genotypes and phenotypes for these different genotypes? So we've got genotypes here. I want you to give me the phenotypes. Go ahead and take a minute to, uh, to calculate those. All right, so hopefully you ended up with something like this. 2B, or blue alleles, is going to give us blue tail. 2G, or green alleles, are going to give us green tails. But if we have both, if we have blue and green, we're going to have a blue and green tail. They're both expressed, or we see both of those in the phenotype. It's not a mix or a blend, but we actually see both of them. Our next type of inheritance that we're going to look at is called multiple alleles. And in multiple alleles, we have more than two alleles. And a great classic example that we always use is human blood type. And so human blood type has three different allele types. Uh, you might actually know your blood type. Um, there's a couple of different alleles that make up those different blood types. We have alleles A, B, and O. And we can have them in a couple different genotype configurations that result in different phenotypes. If we have two A alleles, we get blood type A. But if we also have an A allele and an O allele, we still get blood type A. That A kind of covers up or dominates the O. If we have A and B, we get blood type uh, AB. That's the only combination that will give us the phenotype or blood type of AB. To get blood type B, kind of similar to, uh, to A, we have two B alleles or a B and an O allele, we get blood type B. 
The only combination that will give us blood type O is two O alleles. So to get some practice figuring out what the different uh, blood types would be possible from, from some parents, let's say we have a parent that has blood type A. Their genotype is AO for their alleles, but their phenotype is blood type A. Our second parent is uh, blood type B. Their phenotype is blood type B, and they have two B alleles. I'd like you now to figure out what the different possibilities for their offspring would be. Uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, hopefully you looked, uh, you have something like this. Um, just like a normal Punnett square, we'd have AB, so that would give us blood type AB. B and O alleles would give us blood type B. Uh, we'd also have AB here in this portion of the Punnett square and BO again uh, in this one. And so half of the offspring we would expect to be, or to have blood type AB with these alleles A and B. And the other half we'd expect to be blood type B with alleles B and O. The next one that we're going to look at is called sex-linked traits, and these are traits that are linked to the sex chromosomes, uh, either X or Y. Um, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, uh, 22 of those we call autosomal chromosomes, and the X and the Y we call sex chromosomes. Um, the sex-linked traits are usually on the X chromosome. The Y chromosome is very small and contains very little amount of genetic information. Um, essentially, it's just responsible for making males male. And a great example of sex-linked traits, specifically uh, X-linked trait, is colorblindness. It's a recessive disorder, and it's only found in the X chromosome. So men, we only have one X chromosome, and we also have a Y chromosome. Females have two X chromosomes. Two X chromosomes here for females, one X, one Y for males. And so to be colorblind, you only need one recessive allele. And so males, because they only have one X chromosome, if they receive a recessive um, uh, X chromosome from their mom, they are going to be colorblind. So let's take a look at that a little bit closer here. Uh, here we've got a couple different pictures. Um, you should be able to see some numbers inside these circles. If you can't, potential that you could be colorblind. Uh, we can do some more tests. Um, I'll give you a second to uh, to look at these and then and then give you the answers of what they should be. This first one here should be an eight inside of the circle. It's a green uh, eight. The next one should be a five here. This one's a little bit hard to see. And the last one should be a 12 inside of our circle. Uh, the last one that we're gonna look at is polygenic inheritance. And these are traits that are controlled by two or more genes. So it's different than uh, multiple alleles. Um, we're looking at traits that are two or more genes. And the most common way to identify these type of traits is that they have a wide range of possibilities. And so you, you think about that, and in class we've been talking about how skin color and eye color, hair color, these are traits that have a very wide possibility. There are, uh, most people don't have the same eye color, most people don't have the same skin color, most people don't have the same hair color. These all vary to some degree, even within brown or green or blue and eye color, for example, there's different browns, there's different greens, there's different blues. And so polygenic inheritance means poly, which is many, genic means genes, and so there's many genes that make up this form of inheritance. And the key thing to remember with polygenic is that it's a range of possible phenotypes. And so, uh, for example, brown, green, blue, um, differences even with that. This map here is showing us different skin color um, throughout the, the world. Um, these can also be influenced by environment. Uh, this is kind of a newer area of science called epigenetics, and you'll have a chance to look at that area a little bit closer. You can skip this slide. We're not going to work with this one today. And our last one here uh, is a little bit of practice um, looking at Hagrid from Harry Potter, uh, looking at his height. If Hagrid's father was a wizard and his mother was a, a giantess, um, the normal heights for giants and wizards are about 20 feet for giants and about 5 to 6 feet for wizards. So knowing that Hagrid's about 12 feet tall, uh, what would be, what might be Hagrid's height? Use your notes, see if you can figure that one out. And so knowing that uh, Hagrid's about 12 feet, we probably suspect that he would be, uh, it would be some sort of incomplete dominance. We'll get some more practice with these in class.